Dan Juma. You know him. He used to play for Bournemouth. Now plays for Villarreal. <laughs> Could have got him for a lot less. How do you want him last season? Forget that. Actually, not forget that. We will come back to that in just a minute. Uh, scored lots of goals last season. Played really well. Now, apparently, we're interested. This doesn't surprise me. You know the drill when I'm doing these videos. Sometimes I'll ask, well, not sometimes, I'll often say I don't believe this particular rumour. This one, I think there's probably something in it. I've always fancied that there were a couple of transfers sort of boiling in the background. Not the, the high profile ones. My hope high profile, I don't mean big names. I mean the ones that are out there for a long time before we sign them. A GERD would be a good example of that. I think we started doing videos probably about a good, probably close to a month before we actually signed the guy. Maybe something like that. Ward Prowse would be another one. Uh, Keen Lewis Potter. These people are in the news for quite a long time. But Badanjuma, in terms of at least this time that we're interested, because apparently we were interested when we were in Bournemouth, but this latest stuff is um, it has come to light really in the last few days. Now, a couple of the big journalists, as you, you may well know, particularly in Spain, they have sort of sports dailies. They don't just have newspapers, they have sports newspapers. It's, it's a big thing over there. And so they have a lot of journalists who've got their ears to the ground. And a couple of the more respected journalists have turned around and they've said West Ham are in for this player. Now, there's also some really interesting comments from him. Because ordinarily, I wouldn't think that anybody would leave Villarreal to come to West Ham just because, well, I think firstly because of the manager, um, secondly because of the, the sort of European prestige that they have. However, there's a few comments from Denjuma and his agent which have changed my mind on it and maybe uh, they're going to change your mind on it as well. From the, from the outset, from the outside, you might look and think this is a prohibitive transfer because he's got a £75 million euro buyout clause well you know what no way absolutely no way can we compete on those terms however it appears he may well be available for whatever euros to pounds about 32 million pounds sterling right um i like him i think he's a really really good player and his name fits his, his name almost fits almost fits he's not quite zuma it's dan zuma and he's he's cheaper than basuma no actually no he's not he's more expensive than basuma um but anyway, I don't, I don't even know what I'm getting carried away with his name stuff for. Uh, I think he's a good. I think it could be well be a very very good signing because he's got bags and bags of talent. Now I just want to read you a couple of comments that the player himself has made about this, about the transfer. Because you know, as I say, you would just think from the outset, why would this guy even be remotely interested in uh, in signing for West Ham? Anyway, these are his these are his comments, right? You have to excuse me. I'm reading reading from my phone. All right. It says, I 100% enjoyed my time in England. I'm glad it's the 100%, not 110%, by the way. 100% enjoyed my time in England. Looking back now, I no way appreciated it as much as I should have done when I lived there. So basically, I think he's almost saying, you know, maybe I was keen to get away. In hindsight and reflecting back, it was better there than I thought. Um, he said, for me, it's just such a nice country to live in and I'm fluent in the language. Okay, so he's he's a really good. In fact, I've heard him interviewed. He's a, he's an excellent English. Oh, the Dutch, the Dutch are the Dutch are better at speaking English than the English. I find most foreign people are better at speaking English than English people. There you go. We're not so good at foreign language ourselves, are we? Anyway, my Dutch is um is is not very good. I, although I do do a very nice Steve McLaren. Dutch accent. It has to be said. I've done a video for that. It's anyway. It says in terms of Premier League, it's not. It's indescribable. The thing I will never forget the Premier League is the fans. You just walk into the stadium, you cannot replicate the feeling of a Premier League game elsewhere in the world. It's different. I mean, he spent one year in Spain. He's basically gone to Spain and he's saying, um, it ain't as good. I mean, he is. He, he is. I always like to look at the language, as you know, and, and cut through what's being said. He is basically saying it's not as good. So, he says, so in that regard, his English is good, isn't it, really? He says, so in that regard, you're always going to miss a bit of England. I mean, my word, this is like ode to England, you know. Um, anyway, uh, if I'm returning one day, I guess that's up to the way I perform and what the future holds for me. Anyway, his agent is a guy called Michael Moses. Um, and he told a Radio Castell, I've probably said that completely wrong, um, that a move could be on the cards this summer. He has said there is a 50% chance that Zanjuma will leave this summer. Um, well, you know what? 
That's from the agent. That's from the horse's mouth. The player saying it. The agent saying it. Um, and then there's all this stuff about Unai Emery as well, who, of course, um, is the VRL manager. Uh, before I tell you what Unai Emery and says, and whilst I straighten up my microphone, no, it's going to fall over. Um, basically, this video and the dodgy microphone are sponsored by the One Football app, which you can download by clicking the link below. They're not really sponsoring the microphone at all. They are literally just sponsoring this video. Uh, you can download the One Football app by clicking the link below or using that QR code. Why would you do that? Well, if you want to find out more about Dan Juma or Basuma or Kurt Zuma, any of the Satsumas, what you can do is download it. And what it does is when you download it, you say, I support West Ham. And it takes all the West Ham news from all the newspapers. And it takes them from all the websites, all the generic websites, all the Premier League ones. And it cherry picks all the stuff that you might be interested in. Puts it all in one place, be it transfers, results, fixtures, everything you need to know. Puts it all into one place. Best of all, it is free. Right, now. You know Emery, the manager. He's he's basically writing love letters to Dan Juma, uh, albeit publicly in the press. I'm sure he's saying it privately to him as well. He really wants him to stay. He loves the player. He really rates the player highly. Um, they're calling him in Spain the hybrid striker. I don't know how you say that in Spanish. Uh, Sp <laughs> Sp Orange Spench. I don't know how you say that in Spench or in Spanish. See, I had French in my mind, and then also I wanted to say Spanish. And what you got was Spench. Do you speak Spench? That's what I want to know. In fact, if anybody leaves me a comment in Spench, I, I'm, well, do you know what? There's no prizes, but I'll probably chuckle uh, quite a lot. This guy fills a hole for us, which is on the left-hand side. I've said this numerous times. Left-hand side is a problem. There's, there's some... Look... Uh, there's often bigger issues at West Ham, and namely striker. They might be left back. They might be central midfield. But I always look at it and think, we ain't got a left winger. We really haven't. Anyone we play on that left wing ain't a left winger in the way that we want to play, in the, in the style that suits us. Now, the thing that I find frustrating about this Danjuma rumour uh, is that we could have got him from Bournemouth and we were interested. We signed Vlasic instead. And we could have got him for considerably cheaper. Um, I mean, he was... I guess it'd be a year before last, wouldn't it, in the Championship? Whenever it was, right? The chance we had the chance to sign him. So he's played Premier League football for Bournemouth, but also he's played in the Championship. He was the best player. It, I, as, as I understand it, I think, and I think I'm right here, he was the best player in the Championship. He was certainly in Team of the, in team of the Year. Um, really, really wonderful player. And it's just... Look, I guess, it, I, I guess maybe David Moyes needed to see him go off and see if he could do it at the top level. But sometimes... Sometimes you need to take a punt, like we did with Jared Bowen, and, and bring the player in. Uh, anyway, anyway, I guess that bit is done. Clearly the player wants to come back to England. Clearly we need a, um, a left winger. Uh, it's just really whether we can persuade Villarreal to sell him. One thing I do know is the finances in Spain at the moment are not good. They're, they're really struggling over there. Um, even the big clubs, even clubs like Barcelona, as you probably know from the press they're really they don't want to sell Frankie de Jong for instance to, to Man United it's the last thing they want to do but they're going to have to do it they they should really be able to buy at the price he is with one year left on his contract just buy Lewandowski um, from Bayern Munich bearing in mind they want him again they're sort of they're up to the point where they're, they're having to sell players, release some wages here or there, just so as they can try and get towards that 24 million euros or whatever it is they've bid. Basically, even the big clubs in Spain are skin. It's exactly why Mbappe um, didn't go to Real Madrid, which he wanted to do. But for two or three months, Mbappe was saying, it's Real Madrid for me, Real Madrid's my dream club, um, you know, Real Madrid posters on the wall when I was growing up and all the rest of it. Um, it did make me laugh, though. At the point when Real Madrid didn't get Mbappe, they, they tried to... Well, they did. They actually reported PSG uh, for, for breach of FFP to UEFA. I mean, it was some sour grape uh, business. Um, I, I wonder if he said it in Spanish or in Spanish. I, I guess we'll never know. Or Franish. Um, oh, dear. Anyway, my point being, I think, unordinarily... Bearing in mind the profile of the club, uh, the good manager, how good they are in Europe, uh, the finances, we wouldn't normally have a chance of doing this deal. But 
at the moment, Premier League clubs are just richer. And you know what? I think if you add in, look, it might be the, not be the most prestigious uh, European football in the world, the uh, the Conference League, but we do have European football. That ticks a box. The player obviously loves it in England. By the way, I, um, I don't know if I read it in that bit. Oh, I've either read it on there or did read it out or it was somewhere else. He's got family over here. He, he said in a, either that interview or another one, I've got family over in England. He said, I still have family in England, which gives the indication that his family didn't, didn't move to Spain. So clearly he's going to be itching for a move back. I would really be excited about this thing. He's really skillful. He can play a number of positions, primarily the left. Let's get the deal done, Moisey. Mm -hmm.